Hi, and welcome to another MI How To video. My name is Tom Clark. I'm your host, and on today's How To, I want to welcome Ralph Haller from HiDAC Technology Corporation, and uh, he's going to be showing us how to properly change an element in a HiDAC FLND duplex filter. Hi, Tom. Thanks for having me. Ralph, welcome. And hey, how about a little background on today's demonstration? Exactly what is a duplex filter? A duplex filter has twin filter bowls and often includes a switchover lever that allows you to change the flow of the liquid from one side of the filter to the other. The advantage of that is that you can change a filter element by isolating it from fluid flow and the hydraulic system can continue to run while you do so. Okay, now before you do that, uh, I think we both agree that PPE is important when you're doing something yeah. like this. Wear the proper PPE so uh, you're safe. And uh, for this case, we've got ourselves a pair of glasses on the table. You may need more. It's for whatever the job calls for. Yep, right, very Ralph? important, Tom. Yes, yep. sir. So, okay, let's get started. All right, Ralph, how do you know when it's time to change the element? Rather than relying on time, on a time period, um, or waiting until the system goes into bypass, we recommend that you use a clocking indicator, okay. which will let you know to what degree your filter is uh, blocked at any time. Yeah. Now, where will we find the indicator on here? It will go right up here. Okay. Okay. There's All a right. there's a plug which you can remove to put the indicator in. Sounds like a good call. I don't want anything to get clogged. That's so right. We yeah. need that. Definitely. Okay. Well, now we're ready to begin. Um, be ready to refer to your catalogs page for the filter, and also we need to look at the service manual for the same thing because you need to know the required tools and torque values uh, for your particular filter for this job. Now, Ralph, how do you know which side, though, is going to be operational? Yeah, that's a very good question, Tom. Uh, to do that, you have to look at the pictogram on the front mm -hmm. that will tell you exactly which of the uh, bolts is operational at this point in time. Okay. And the one that is not, that is where the lever will point to. So on that side, the clean side, where we have a clean element, we will now have to open that vent. Once we have opened up the vent, we're now ready to pull the lever, if you can do that for me. Okay, gotcha. Pull that out and leave it there. And what that will do is we'll open up a flow into that clean element side and fill the bowl up that previously was uh, full of air. So eventually you will see uh, oil coming out of the uh, vent. And at that point, you will close the vent quite quickly. Gotcha. Um, you still pull the lever, and what, what happens now is that you immediately equalize the pressure between these two bolts. Once you have that, then you can move the lever much easier around, and what we're going to do, in fact, now is we're going to bring this lever over 90 degrees to the other side. Okay. Okay, and what we have done right now, we have isolated uh, now the dirty side where we want to take the element out. We mm -hmm. want to replace that. Talk about oil. What if there's an oil drain plug? What yeah. do you do? If you have an oil drain plug, this is the time right now when you take that out. Or in this case, what we have is we have a valve here. So you uh, open up the valve and you let the oil come out uh -huh. and out. But okay. you collect that oil and you dispose of that properly. Uh, it's a safety hazard in your facility. So make sure you always dispose of things properly. Be safe. Now, the next step is that we unscrew the filter bowl. Okay. Okay, so let's do that. Okay. Take All that right. off. Got it. And right. then we also remove the filter element. We have to slide okay. that off the nozzle. Now, which one do we have here? This is the FLND filter. Mm -hmm. Okay, it's a bowl filter, and that means that the elements are sitting on a nozzle on the housing. Gotcha. So, so once we have the element removed, we're going to have a look at the etching here on that end cap. And the etching will tell you what the model code is for this filter, and you compare that to the tag of the filter assembly. Now, what if they don't match, though? If they don't match, or if there is no filter element mentioned on there, you should then go back to your catalog page mm -hmm. for the filter. You have to then look there uh, for the model code breakdown of the element and compare that with what you actually have. And if they don't match, now you have that's the time when you contact Motion for clarification. Uh, yeah, remember okay. that, OK. Changing micron ratings on these elements um, or replacing it with will fits from other competitors uh, could negatively impact the performance of your con of your hydraulic yeah, system. Yeah, you don't want that. The will fits or mic nope. fits, neither one of those. Right. No, you want to make sure it's just right. Yeah. So next, we will examine um, all the filter components. That includes the head. See okay. if there's any damage on there. Right. We'll have a look at the threads and at the sealing surfaces. Okay. And then we're going to clean all that as well. We're going to take all the uh, grease off. You should always do that. Right. Yeah. Now we're ready to actually check the O-ring seals. Okay. And then we can replace them if necessary. Right. And we have like an O-ring set here. That is a typical set that would go into a filter like this. Okay. If okay. needed, we refer again to the service manual for the part numbers of okay. any spare parts that we need. 
the letter V in there would uh, stand or refers to a fluorocarbon elastomer, and that's commercially known as Viton. Okay. Gotcha. What do we do next? Next, uh, we now lubricate the threads and the sealing areas okay. um, with clean hydraulic fluid. Gotcha. And once we've done that, we apply silver grade antices to the threads only. Is there any particular kind that HIDAC recommends? Yeah, HIDAC recommends MIL PRF 907E. Good. I bet we're getting close to done. Almost? Yeah, we're almost done. So for these bolt type filters, we now push, let's assume this is our replacement element. Right. We're now going to push this back on. Gotcha. And then we're going to put the bolt back on. All right. Careful, don't touch the edges. This is like operation, the nose will light up for it. Yeah. So, so you're going to turn this until you hit uh, metal to metal contact. Mm -hmm. And uh, once you have done that, you either uh, screw your drain uh, screw back in, or in this case, because we just have a valve here, you just yeah. tighten the valve. Okay. And once you've done that, you can actually back this off by a quarter turn, this bolt, because we have radial seal designs and they will, uh, they will seal no matter what. You don't need talking, it's not required. In fact, it can actually result in leaking if you talk. So for any filter to fill and vent that, uh, please follow the service manual for your particular filter. Now for this one, we're actually done for today. We're all finished, we're yep. good. Well, excellent. Ralph, thank you so much. Some Thanks great information there. I appreciate yep. it. Thank that is Ralph Hallery is with Hydac Technology Corporation. And as we mentioned earlier, you got questions? Call Motion Industries. They will be more than happy to help you. We had our PPE here just in case we needed it. Always make sure you wear the right PPE for whatever the job calls for. That's priority number one. Stay safe. Number two, head to mihowto.com. A lot of great videos there with me, Tom Clark, as your host. Thank you so much for watching. We'll see you next time.